The excitement for Flight 4 is really ramping up, and to prepare for this highly anticipated flight, SpaceX has made huge changes to stage zero, promising to make a difference. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech, how must SpaceX changes stage zero to match the launch schedule? As the main focus of the workers, literally hours after the third liftoff of Starship, the orbital launch mount has been continuously repaired and replaced with necessary components. Starting from the smallest cracks at the base of the launch pad, which have been welded back together, such meticulous attention highlights SpaceX's dedication to maintaining the integrity of the structure, especially in the face of the immense forces generated by Raptor engines during liftoff. Looking upwards, we can observe changes regarding the Booster Quick Disconnect BQD arm for the propellant system. They've been undergoing processing and some components have been replaced over the past few weeks. Once again, the Booster Quick Disconnect hood has been reinstalled. This was previously done shortly after the last launch when they replaced the main liquid oxygen hose. It'll be very interesting to see if this new protective door can prevent the hoses from being torn during liftoff. If it does, that'd be another item that SpaceX can remove from the post-launch refurbishment checklist, saving a lot of time. Additionally, there is the replacement of the booster launch clamps. The launch table has 20 separate hold-down clamps that attach to the bottom of the booster for static fires and launches from the orbital pad. For launches, these hold-down clamps will release once all the engines on the booster are at nominal thrust, if a seemingly simple but incredibly important hardware component. After supporting Starship through multiple launches, it's finally time to replace them. Hopefully, with this replacement, the clamps can be used for a longer duration. The QD arm of the ship has also completed some tests immediately after the launch and is gradually reducing activities at this time. Some thermal insulation materials on the propulsion lines have been replaced to ensure proper insulation of the interior components, which will prevent any vaporization while pumping fuel into the ship for testing or rocket launches. Work is also progressing rapidly on the launch tower and Mechazilla's chopstick arms to ensure stability for Flight 4 and future long-distance flights. The hydraulic drive system has been recently replaced with an upgraded drive system. This upgrade is to prepare for the chopstick arms to catch the booster by allowing them to close faster during the catching process. Recently, we have seen SpaceX conducting tests with a new chopstick drive system. There were three tests on the left chopstick equipped with a new drive system being moved back and forth slightly. This seems to be some initial steps to verify its functionality, and we'll have to wait to see when the right chopstick also moves. After that, SpaceX will need to recheck the entire Mechazilla system once again as it's clearly necessary to lift the booster and place it on the orbital launch mount. So it'll need to be rectified relatively early if the flight takes place in May. This may be a good sign that the vehicles are about to return to the launch site after they start testing the chopstick. However, the Starship launch is not just about the tower. You also need fuel, which takes us to the tank farm. Recently, we couldn't help but notice the busy activity of workers making a new wall near the tank farm. This wall reduces visibility into the site. Alongside that are the dynamic changes happening at the tank farm, which add extra excitement to this preparation phase. Bright red lights like torches were seen on a tank at the GSE-7 storage area on April 19th, signaling removal. By the end of the day, the tank shell was successfully lifted and meticulously cut into smaller, easily removable pieces. However, there was still a portion remaining. Due to recent additions of support beams, the tank shell couldn't be fully lifted, so only a part of the top beam was removed at the first lifting to counterbalance the outer frame. The lower rear portion was left behind, still bolted to the ground, and would be lifted separately. It wasn't until the evening of April 22nd that SpaceX completely removed the remaining bottom portion of the tank shell. By the morning of April 23rd, the inner tank was also lifted out of position before undergoing a precise cutting process similar to the outer tank. Now, four tanks remain, three containing liquid oxygen and one containing nitrogen. SpaceX's next removal focus will shift to the nitrogen tank, while the liquid oxygen tank may still exist until after the fourth flight, as this section of the tank farm requires more piping connections. Those upgrades will mark a significant step in fully transitioning the tank farm to horizontal tanks also known as hot dog tanks, as Elon Musk described. Originally, methane, liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, and water were stored in large vertical tanks constructed by SpaceX at the production site, using a procedure akin to the assembly of Starship prototypes. However, with the introduction of numerous sizable horizontal tanks, Elon Musk declared that the original vertical tanks would eventually be replaced entirely by the horizontal ones. Shells 2 and 8 suffered significant damage from large concrete fragments launched during Starship Flight Test 1, as well as pressure from Starship Flight Test 2. 
Consequently, the transition to horizontal tanks is likely motivated by their demonstrated ability to withstand launches more effectively. The first of the original vertical tanks were moved from the OLS tank farm on the 6th of January and were shortly followed by Shell 2, Shell 8, and GSE-8 have all been removed and scrapped. The current work is progressing quite smoothly. It can be imagined that this year we'll witness the complete removal of these vertical tanks and usher in a new era for the tank farm in the upcoming flights. And we'd be remiss if next we didn't update the key players in this story. None other than the Starship rocket. Starship 29's undergone extensive modifications, replacing hundreds of heat shield tiles. The replacement of heat shield tiles shows significant efforts to enhance the survivability of the vehicle during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. These modifications involve the meticulous removal and replacement of existing heat shield tiles, a task that demands precision and attention to detail. Engineers and technicians have diligently worked to install new tiles, ensuring that they're securely adhered to the spacecraft's surface. Additionally, advancements in attachment techniques, such as the use of glue in conjunction with traditional mounting clips, have been implemented to enhance durability and reliability. Up to now, SpaceX has completed the installation of heat shield tiles on the nose of Ship 29, a section that engineers had perhaps anticipated to have issues with, so earlier they had removed the tiles to inspect. The remaining task is to fill the gaps in the flaps, which are still in the process of being finalized. As the aerospace community eagerly awaits the outcome of these modifications, speculation abounds regarding their potential impact on the success of future Starship missions. Will Ship 29's upgraded thermal protection system prove effective in withstanding the rigors of re-entry? Only time will tell. Nevertheless, one thing remains certain. SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation and excellence ensures that each modification brings humanity one step closer to realizing the dream of interplanetary exploration. On the other hand, the information regarding Booster 11 seems to be bleak. However, fortunately, recently we have seen a hot staging ring with a dome in the middle, present at the production site. It's highly likely intended for Booster 11, as it still lacks a hot staging ring, which is the final main component of the booster that needs to be installed. Yeah, it's all speculation. Could be right, could be wrong. But this appearance marks another development in Starship production. So, how about the other members of the Starship's team? Ship 30 has been spotted in Mega Bay 2 with all six of its engines installed, while Booster 12 is undergoing engine installation. The combination of Ship 30 and Booster 12 is slated to fly on Starship's fifth flight. Ship 31 is stacked inside High Bay awaiting testing. At the Massey test site, Booster 13 arrived April 25th, preparing for upcoming tests. Ship 31 and Booster 13 could fly on the sixth test flight of Starship, while Booster 14 is scheduled for the seventh test flight. The test flight may be conducted with Ship 32. It's the last Starship before the Starship V2 version of the system is produced. Overall, SpaceX is still working diligently on its journey towards future Starship launches, especially the upcoming fourth flight. Once the fourth flight is successful, their subsequent flights will become easier than ever. SpaceX has planned to conduct up to nine Starship flights this year, according to FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transformation, Kelvin Coleman. And if not, they should at least try and accomplish six Starship flights, according to Elon Musk. And that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.